is able, he's able. I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Yes, he's able, able. I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He healed the broken hearted, set the captive free, made the lame to walk again, and he calls the blind to see. stand. Good morning and God bless all of you this day. Some or, some or many of you may already know this, but I didn't either way enjoy this. I know God loves us, but when I found out it is not my joy I have for him, it is his joy he has for me and for you. The joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. I cherry-picked the last few words of that from Nehemiah 8.10. Uh -huh. God really does delight in you. Yes, he does. There may be times we assume that God is fundamentally angry and simultaneously know that we are nothing special. We may feel like we're nothing special. We're not unique or extraordinary in our service. We cannot be believe that on earth or in heaven... The God of the universe would sing over us his song of delight. Yes. And there's a song of delight in Zephaniah 317, and I'll read that just before I close. Yes. How can a holy God delight in me? Well, a preacher named Henry Donald Maurice Spence back in the middle 18, early 1900s once said, God is so joyous that he finds joy even in us. Think about that for a moment. God's song of joy over his justified children is not merely the sum of the joy we attract from him. It is also the multiplication of his abundance, abundant joy exponentially. That means an increase more and more rapidly, expressing itself out over us. Joyful people more easily express joy. Just as God delights to rejoice over his children because he is essentially joyful. Yeah. The happiness of God is the strength that you need. Amen. Amen. So the song in Zephaniah is, The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who saves. Lord, he will rejoice over you with joy. Yeah. He will be quiet in his love, making no mention of your past sins. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. If you're in the battle for the Lord and the right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must. A 
against all evil. Then bear the cross you must Keep on the firing line Life is but to labor for the master dear Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer Great you'll be rewarded for your service here Keep on the firing line Well you must fight Savior there, leading in the fight with the 
with tender hands outstretched toward the valley low. Oh, guiding me, I can see as I homeward go. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Then to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When he for me billows rise from the mighty deep. Then my Lord directs my bar, he doesn't seem to keep. Then he leads me gently on through this world below. He's only a friend to me, oh, I love him so. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Then to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's all past for my life, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Then to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, oh my life, ever to rejoice. Oh, power, power, wonder working power in the blood. It's in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the Word of God, I shall prevail. 
Give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your holy name, Father. Glory to you, Father. Oh, we bless your name. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm just basking in his presence. Amen. I'm learning to lean. How many is learning to lean this morning? Glory to God. Hey, right, shake hands this morning and be friendly. Glory. seated this morning. Hallelujah. 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 You can be seated. Amen. How many uh, felt the presence of God? Amen. You know what? There's something about those old hymns that stirs your heart. Amen. I like some of the new music, but I like to hear the old hymns sometimes. Amen. Amen. That's right. The one song that she sang is one of my favorite songs. Oh, I want to see him. Yeah. Look upon his face, Amen. there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass, home at last, evermore to rejoice. Amen. Boy, but in one of those verses that says this, that he, we are clinging to him. Amen. We're leaning on him. We're clinging to him. How many has ever seen a little child that's afraid and her mama is there? And what does she do? She clings to that mama. She ain't getting away from that mama, not getting away from her. She's clinging. Well, brothers and sisters, some of us need to learn how to cling. Amen. When trouble comes, run to the Savior. When, when, when the trials are assailing you and, and it looks all like hell has broke against you, run to the Savior and cling to him. Lean on him. Amen. Because in him is the power that we need in our lives. Amen. And so we rejoice in him this morning. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You've got a Savior that's here that cares about you and loves you and wants you to learn to cling to him. You know, I, I, I think sometimes God allows situations to rise up in our lives that we have to learn to cling to him. Amen? Anybody's ever tried to do it on their own? <laughs> Don't work. How'd that work? <laughs> Never works out. Never does. Never does. And so we just got to learn to give it all to him. Amen? Yeah, you can fret and stew and, and grumble and complain, but it won't change the situation. No, it won't. But if you learn to cling to Jesus... Give it all to him. Amen. Amen. Everything to him. Give it all to him. He, he's not afraid of it. Come on. He won't shock him. He already knows it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There's nothing hidden from him, right? He has an all-seeing eye. Amen. He can see what you don't want anybody else to see. Yeah, that's true. That's kind of terrifying sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, we give him praise and glory this morning. We're grateful for yes, each one of you here today. We rejoice in him because he is our Savior. Yes, he is. He's our deliverer. Yes. He's our healer. Come on. Yes. He's our baptizer. Yes. He's the one and only God. Amen. Yes, he is. Yes, There's he none is. like him. There's none that oh, can be compared hallelujah. to him. 
He's the yeah. one who formed the stars and the moon yeah. and the sun, who formed the planet and the earth and, yes, and the flowers and the trees and the animals on it. He's the one and all yeah. creator yeah. of all Thank things. Jesus. Amen. He took nothing and made something out of it. You know, it's what he does for us. We were nothing at one time. He took that nothing and made us something in him. Amen. Come on up, Joe. Take up the offering. Well, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Time to worship the Lord. Time to give back to him what he's given to us. You know something, guys? God don't need what we have. He got it all. He owns it all. All the silver and gold, all the diamonds and rubies, they're his. But we need to give to him to prove his word true. So he blesses us again and again. Let's all stand today. Hallelujah. Let's bring our offering forward. We'll pray afterwards, Father. Thank you, Lord. I remember when my burdens rolled away. Rolled away. I'd carry them for years, night and day. Night and day. When I sought the blessing, Lord, and I took him at his word. Then at once I saw my burdens roll away. Well, roll away. Roll away. Roll away. Roll away. I am happy since my burdens rolled away. Roll away. Roll away. Roll away. Roll away. I am happy since my burdens rolled away. I remember when my burdens rolled away. I had feared would never leave now. So I left them at the cross. Oh, I'm glad when my burdens roll away. Roll away. Roll away. Roll away. Roll away. I am happy since my burdens roll away. Roll away. Roll away. Roll away. Roll away. I am happy since my burdens roll away. I am happy since my burdens roll away. Stretch your hands this way if you would. Father, we come before you together as a family, God. Your children gathered to do nothing but worship you and express and show our love to you, Father, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the gift that's given to the church today. Let it go to meet the needs that are before us, Father. We thank you for the seed that's planted that will return unto us, Father. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do Penny March. Amen. Can I have some volunteers this morning? Oh, I got two, two pretty volunteers. Oh, I got another volunteer. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, get your, get your change ready. These, these young people, they're going to be going on a uh, little thing here before long. Can you get it out of there, brother? Here, let me get it. All right, give me a drum roll, brother. Holla. something then it went past me somewhere else <laughs> anybody nobody's ever had that happen have they no uh, we're going to do announcements here in a minute uh, put that one slide up it looks like a cross right there all right somebody sent me uh, a thing and how many knows that the, uh, the, the DNA and the protein in our body and this is a protein shaped in the form of a cross that holds our body together. 
It holds every fiber of us together. And he sa- and it says this, and he is before all things, and in him all things are held together, Colossians 1, 17. That amazed me. I just wanted to share that this morning. That amazes me that the cross has never been an afterthought of God. It's always been in his mind to do that, amen? Because he knew there was only way men could be redeemed is by the cross and the blood shed upon that cross. And so that is the most amazing thing. Uh, it's called the... Don't ask me how to pronounce it. Laminum. Laminum. Okay, there you got it. It's a cell adhesion. It's a molecule that holds us all together. Jesus holds us together. Amen? Amen? You know, the, the cross, also about the cross is this. I, I we not even doing uh, 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 communion. <laughs> but the, when, they set, when God set the camp of Israel in order, if you was to climb up on a mountain and watch that camp, you would see it in the form of a cross as it marched forward, amen? And even the tabernacle furniture in the center of that cross was in the, shaped in the form of a cross, a cross within a cross, and every cell of our body is held together by that cross, amen? amen. Glory to God. God is amazing, is he not? Now, I'm not, I, I, I see Sister Terry, it's children's church. <laughs> 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 glory <laughs> glory to God alright you can put up the announcement sister praise the Lord thank you all for giving to the youth uh, I just want to say that tonight at 6pm is our evening service we have an evening service every last fr- Sunday of the month Wednesday at 6pm is gleaning in the word our Bible study And we have prayer meeting immediately following. Thursday at 6 p.m. is our praise and worship practice. Coming up events in November on the 4th at 9 a.m., the gentlemen will be going to IHOP for their breakfast and prayer meeting. Okay? On the 18th, the church will be having its family Thanksgiving dinner here at the church. And I will get a a sign-up sheet if you want to bring something, put it on that sheet so that we know, you know, that we don't have a bunch of, like, one thing. (laughs) Praise the Lord. On the 25th, uh, that is the Saturday after uh, Thanksgiving at 1 o'clock, and it'll be at least 4 when we get done, the kids are going to have their day out. We're going to take them to see the, uh, the star. It's about the birth of Jesus. And then we're going to come back here and we're going to have games. And uh, they like those games. They especially like that pie in the face. Boy, even some of the adults got in on that. uh, I tell you, that's funny, I guess. Uh, So then we're going to have that day out. And on the 26th, that is during the morning services at 1030. That is the 26th of November. And at 6 p.m. services that evening, uh, Brother and Sister McCartney will be here with us. So uh, we just want you to know those announcements. And let's see, I think next sun, next Saturday, which will be the 4th, you put your clock back an hour when you go to bed. Yeah. Get an extra hour of sleep. If you don't put your clock back an hour, you might be here an hour early. Now, Brother Terry's always down here, but uh, <laughs> I may not even be up by then. But anyway, those are the announcements. Keep them, uh, we'll announce these every week so that you'll be updated, okay? All right. (laughs) Oh, glory. God is good, is he not? Amen. Um, We're going to pray. I had some uh, lady that I sent me an urgent prayer request this morning over uh, over Messenger, and then we're going to pray for little Jerry. And uh, we're going to pray for uh, Pam's mother who is dying with pancreatic cancer. And uh, so we're going to lift those up in prayer. Anybody else have prayer requests? Joe? Okay. What's her name? Ruby. Ruby. Okay. And we'll pray for Kelsey, too. Not my granddaughter, but another Kelsey. And 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 so uh, any other prayer requests this morning? Glory. God is a good God, is he not? God answers prayer, right? God answers prayer. Amen. 
if you don't pray, God can't answer it. Amen. And, and so today, we're also going to pray for souls. We're going to pray for this church, and we're going to pray that God has his way. Amen. Because I want God to have his way in this church. Amen. I don't want no flesh here. I want the Holy Spirit moving here. There's no room for the flesh. Amen. So grab somebody by the hand this morning. And I'm, I'm going to grab Lee since he's right here. Father God, we give you praise and glory this morning. We are thankful for all that you've done already, God. You've already moved on our hearts by the, by the worship we've enjoyed, Father. And God, we pray that you enjoyed that worship, Father, that your name was lifted up, Father. And Father, we are thankful for that opportunity to come into your house to magnify you, Father. And Lord, we just pray for these requests, Father. You see each and every need. This, this lady who is so desperate needs an answer, Father God. Move in her situation, God. Let her hear your voice, God. Send someone to her, God, to strengthen her and to encourage her in you, Father God. And Lord, we pray for Jerry. We come against the enemy that's attacking his body, God. We know what the doctor says, but we know you're the healer. And Father God, we just pray for healing in his body, God, for restoration, God. God, let him hear your voice, God, and let him hear the voice of healing in his life, Father God. And Lord, we thank you for it, God. We pray for Kelsey. We pray that you would set this girl free, God. The enemy is trying to destroy her, God. So many lives have been lost to this, Father. But we pray right now, God, you would break the powers of darkness in her life, Father. We thank you for it. We pray for Ruby, God. We, we pray we lift her up, God. God, touch her, God, by the mighty hand, your mighty hand, God. You're a God, a caring and loving God. And God, we just right now ask that you would move in her life. Touch her, Father. And Lord, we just pray for the souls in this world, God, that are lost, Father. We have neighbors, we have friends, co-workers, God, relatives, God, that does not know you as Savior. Oh, Lord, we wish that none would perish, but all would come to a saving knowledge of you. Lord, we don't want to see one soul lost to this evil world, oh, Lord God, but all of them to come to you, Father. And God, we just give you praise and glory in your house today. Father, we are so thankful for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, right now I ask you to anoint this word. God, that would be planted in good ground, God. God, if they not having not have hearing ears, give them hearing ears this morning. God, open their hearts up to your word, that that seed that is planted in their life by the power of your Holy Spirit will begin to reproduce in their life, begin to bring forth life and liberty, God. Will bring forth the joy and the presence of God in their life, Father. We are thankful to be in your house today. We're thankful to be able to stand in your pulpit. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would have his way. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. I'm going to be preaching a series of out of uh, 2 Peter 1, uh, uh, starting with uh, chapter uh, 1, 2. And I, I'm going to, I titled the name of this message, Knowing God. You know that Paul said this, that, uh, that I may know him. Here is a man who was translated up to the third heavens and had a, an amazing discourse with the Holy Spirit and the Savior. And yet he writes later that I may know him. See, a lot of us know about God, but we don't know God. We know facts about God. We know what the scripture tells us, but we don't know him in here. There's a difference from here to here. Amen. Uh, and so we, we, not, we need to know God by our heart, not by our knowledge alone. And so the, the fact is this, that when you begin to know God by your heart, he begins to change your knowledge of him. Because it doesn't now, doesn't just be a fact anymore. It's a something that's birthed within you and becomes a part of you. Amen? And so we need to go know God. Now, Peter tells us some things in this chapter, and I'm, not, I'm going to take my time because I, I'm not going to get through this today. I know I ain't. I'll probably just get through a couple of verses this morning. But he says this in Second uh, Peter 1 and down 2 through 4. I'm going to read them. Grace and peace. How many likes that? Grace and peace. Be multiplied. Wow. Multiplied. 
How, much, how many got peace right now? God wants to multiply that. He doesn't want you to just have plain peace. He wants to multiply that peace in your life. To you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power is given to us all things. Remember that. All things. Not some things, not just part of things, but all things God has given to us. Amen. Uh, that pertain to what? Life and godliness. Now there's the kicker, godliness. Uh, but we're going to go past that right now. Through the knowledge of him. There it is again. It says, the first part, he says, in the knowledge of God. We gain peace and grace in the knowledge of God. Then we learn how to pertain life and godliness through the knowledge of God. Okay? And, and so, if you'll give me some time, I will get where I'm going to go. Nobody's going to give me any time. Okay. I'm going to get there anyway. <laughs> That through these you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature. Knowing God. Amen? Divine nature having escaped what? The corruption that is in this world through lust. This world is full of evil. Just past week, two people murdered in this city. One, a young girl who, who, who had... Been led astray. See, the devil's out to destroy the youth of this nation because if there is no youth to carry on the word of God and everybody else dies that's serving God, then there's nobody left. And so he ensnares them. See, the fact is the youth don't even see that they've been entrapped. They just walk into that snare and don't even think about it. I mean, they're just like, they're real gullible. Devil just got them by his grip and he won't let go of them. And because they don't know God. In their families, their, their parents have not served God. Oh, maybe their grandparents, but they say, oh, we don't, that grand, that's, old, that's old time. We're, we're, we're new people, you know. We're, we're worldly people. Yes, you are. Yes, you are worldly. Because the only thing that satisfies you is the next high or the next video game or the next drink of liquor. That's worldly. That's, that is ensnared people. Amen? And, and they walk into it freely. I, I, they walk in look like they, you're blind. You can't even see the, the trouble down the road. See, the, the Bible tells us that there is a pleasure in sin for a time, but there's a payday coming. Amen? Because when the Lord God splits the skies and he calls us into a heaven, we're going to stand before him one day and we're going to answer for everything we've done and said in our lives. Amen? Nobody's going to escape it. The atheist is not going to escape it. I just watched a video about atheists. <laughs> this guy was really giving it to him. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to get into that. It's getting past my mouth. <laughs> but he says this, grace and peace be multiplied. How many remember what multiplication is? It's not the same today. <laughs> it's that new math. It takes them an hour to get an answer. You can do it in one minute. <laughs> Amen? Don't make sense to me. Anyway, so he says grace and peace is what? Multiplied to you. Peter indicates that grace and peace to those that two most precious gifts. He starts out with this, grace and peace. Come on. He, he begins this. You, you need to know grace and peace. And he says the only way we're going to know that is through the knowledge of him. Amen? We're not going to know it by studying uh, uh, Fruit, Fruit or where that guy was, it was a, a psychologist or whatever he was. Uh, we're not going to study it by uh, all the other philosophies of life. We're only going to gain grace, grace and peace through the knowledge of his word. Amen? Because that's what gives us grace and peace is his word. And so the more we know about him, God begins to multiply that in our life. It's one times one makes one, but God begins to multiply one times two equals two. Two times two equals four. God begins to multiply that in your life. As you know him, God begins to give you more peace and gives you more grace, and he gives you more strength to serve him every day. God is there for you to multiply those things in your life. But brother and sister, he said through the knowledge of him, that indicates we've got to do something. Knowledge is not going to come from you just sitting here. Knowledge is going to come with you spending time with God every day of the week. 
Knowledge comes to knowing his word and understanding his heart and his desire for your life and your, his purpose for your life because he has a purpose for each and every one of us in this house today. And so we gain grace and peace through him. What is grace? We all, we all know the, the, the one meaning, unmerited favor. You know what? Can I just uh, take some time here about grace? I want us to see that grace is more than that. See, Paul it said this about Paul. Uh, he had a messenger of Satan that buffeted him. And it said he sought God three times to take that thing away from him. And God's answer was, okay, I'll get rid of it. No, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Therefore, it tells us it's about grace, is that grace is strength in our life. And, and so he says, my grace is sufficient. So Paul, he may not like the answer, but he knew what, what God was speaking to him. So the gospel message is the, the good news of God's grace. This is the good news of God's grace. You're not going to find it anywhere else. You're not going to find it in a novel or any other book. You're only going to find it here. You're going to find the good news of God's grace. You're not going to find it in the Torah. Uh, you might find it in the Torah. I don't know. But you, might, you ain't going to find it in the other religions of this world today. You're only going to find it in his word. So what grace is what? The essential, listen to this, it's the essential part of God's character. God is a God of grace. You ought to be praising him for it. Because only by grace are you here. Because if, if it wasn't for God's grace, this world would be empty again. Because nobody would make it. And so it's only by his grace, his mercy, that we're here. The gospel, this good news of God is that grace it is an essential part of God's plan for our life. Grace is closely related to God's love. John 3.16. How many knows John 3.16? How many learned it when they were a kid? They drummed that in you. For God so loved the world that he gave. What did God give? He gave his love. He took his only begotten son, the only one he had, not, not, there's no other one, and gave him to those to crucify him. Even Jesus, at one moment, did not feel the grace and love of God. He said, oh my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And so, there is times in our life we may not feel the grace and the mercy of God and the love of God, but I want to tell you something. It's still there. The devil's a liar and the truth is not in him. He's always going to tell you that nobody cares, nobody loves you, and God is not going to give you grace. You've been a dirty, rotten bum, and God's got no more grace for you. What a lie. So it's an essential part of God's life. So if it's an essential part of God's life, it's an essential part of our life. See, we want grace, but we don't give grace. Right? We want God to love us, but we don't want to love some of others. We, we want God to do this, but we don't want God to do it for somebody else. Come on. Uh, and what God gives, God expects us to give back. Grace can be variously defined as God's favor toward the unworthy. I stand there. I'm unworthy of God's grace. God's benevolence is on the undeserving. In his grace, God is willing, what? To forgive us and bless us abundantly. That's God's grace. God does not only save you, he keeps you. And in spite of the fact that we don't deserve to be treated so well or dealt with so generously, he still gives us his grace. Oh, I'm on. To fully understand what grace is, we need to consider who we were without Christ. How many knows God's grace was working in your life before you even give your heart to him? There is times I should have been dead, but I know it was God's grace that kept me. Amen. Nothing but God's love and grace for me kept me from dying. 
Amen. And so there is times when God shed his great grace upon us. Even when we don't deserve it, God still gives us grace. Psalm 51 5 says this. We were born in sin. So he says, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. We, we were all born in sin. We all needed grace. There's not one of us that did not need grace. Now, s- some people, they argue today, I mean, I'm, I don't get where they get some of this stuff, but some they, oh, we don't have a sin nature. Yes, we do. We got it from Adam. When Adam sinned, he caused sin into all mankind. And so we were born into sin and iniquity. He said, my mother conceived me. So we all stand in need of grace in our life. David said this. And he says, and we were guilty of breaking God's law. Romans 3.21 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. Of the glory of God, I'm sorry. 1 John 1, 8 through 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is what? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned and we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Wow. We were enemies of God at one time. Every one of us were an enemy of God. Because you were either for him or against him. There's no middle road. Romans 5, 6 and 10. For we yet being without strength. Listen to this. For yet being without strength. Because see, brother and sister, we cannot save ourselves. We can't do enough good things. We, we can't do it that be the kindest person in the world. We cannot save ourselves because if we think that that is where salvation is, we're negating the cross. We're saying the cross was not essential because I can get to heaven some other way. Come on. The Bible says there's only one way. And that's Jesus Christ and him crucified. And so unless we accept that and receive his grace into our life, we are an enemy with God. Some of you don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. Amen? And, and, and so I'm not going to apologize for the truth, but Romans 5, 6, and 10 says this, For ye yet being without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for the righteous. He died for the ungodly. He died for me. He died for you. He died for everybody. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, being much more reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Can I go on? Romans 8, 7 says this, Because the carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Colossians 1, 21, And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now he has reconciled you. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is what? Death. Not life. It's death. Wow. Pretty plain, is it not? At at one time, we were unrighteous. For Romans 3, 10 says it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Our righteousness is just filthy rags, Isaiah says. Our righteousness is not our righteousness. It's his righteousness in us that we are righteous. Because of him, we become righteous. When God looks at us now, he sees us as righteous. See, we don't see ourselves the way God sees. We don't see the grace and the mercy of God working in our life because God said that he had created us in righteousness and holiness. We are, that's who we are, sister. We're righteous and holy, not because of us, but because of what Christ has done for us. We have received his grace and his love and his mercy, and therefore we are righteous in him. See, to understand righteousness is just a little bit to get off. The righteousness means doing right things. That's all it means. But you can't do enough right things without him. Amen? Bill Gates can give his billions away and not be a right thing. He's got to do it in him. He's got to do it in him.
So spiritually, this is what we are, where we were at one time in our lives. We were destitute. We were blind. We were unclean, and we were dead. Our souls were in pearl of everlasting punishment that God in his grace reached down to us and brought us out of the ash heap and set us upon the rock Christ Jesus, and we found grace in his sight and mercy for our souls. Amen. And so, but then grace came. God extended his favor to us. Grace is what saves us. Ephesians 2, 8 says this, For by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourself. It is what? The gift of God. God's grace is his gift. He gives us his grace. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to do anything for it. God says, here it is. It's yours. Wow. So grace is what? It's the essence of this book, the Bible. It talks about grace. Acts 20, verse 24. But none of those things move me, neither do I count my life dear to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify fully of the gospel of grace of God. Paul preached the gospel of grace. You know what grace does too? It gives us victory over sin. James 4, 6. But he gives you more grace. There it is. He gives you more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. God gives you more grace. He multiplies it in your life. When you, when you think you've really messed up, God gives you his grace. God extends your, his hand to you and says, here you are. I still love you. Get back up out of the ash heap and let's go fight this battle. Too many Christians have given up when the battle got rough. We sing that song earlier. In the battle you must be. Keep on the firing line. I don't know. I just, come on. Give me a break. <laughs> Critics, that's all I got. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep on the firing line. In the battle, we're in a battle for our very souls at times. We have to keep on the line because the enemy is out to destroy you, but God wants to extend his hand of grace to you and say, I don't care how hot the battle is or how bad it is, I'm here with you. I give you my grace so that you can get through this. Amen. Grab a hold of the grace, the hand of God, and let him pull you through that valley, through that mountain, through all those situations in your life, no matter what the devil. Because, see, the devil, he's going to lie to you all the time. He's going to tell you there's not enough grace, there's not enough mercy for you, for you're a rotten, dirty, no good enemy of God, and he's going to lie to you. But I'm going to tell you what, God is going to stop every lie. One day the truth will prevail and people will begin to believe and trust in his word and begin to stand upon that word and won't listen to the lies of the devil anymore because he's out to destroy us. He knows his time is short. How many knows I feel God's time is close? Every day I get up, I think this could be the day. This could be the day that he blows his trumpet. And I ascend up with him. Come on, brother and sister. God has given us enough grace. He's given us enough grace to get through this. The Bible repeatedly calls grace a gift. Grace gives us eternal encouragement and good hope. Every day we rely on his grace. Second Thessalonians 2.16 Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, he's our Father, right? Who has loved us and has given us an everlasting consolation and good hope, what? Through grace. Through grace, everything comes through grace. Hope. Love, joy, peace, it all comes through God's grace because God's grace is unmerited favor. It's a gift. How many ever somebody give you a gift? You just said, oh, you just set it down. Didn't unwrap it. That's what a lot of Christians do. God's given them so many gifts and they just set it down and go unwrap it. They don't enjoy what God has given them. I enjoy my salvation. Every day is a great day for me because of God. 
The enemy will try to attack you, try to take your joy away from you. I, when Mr. Clark gave me that prophecy, he spoke to me about joy. Because of what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Where do I gain joy from? I gain joy from spending time in the presence of God. The only way I can spend time in God's presence is because of his grace for me. Because he loves me. People may not love me. Don't matter. God loves me. Uh, you may think God don't love me, but your opinion doesn't matter. God's is the only opinion I care about. And if he tells me he loves me, I'm sorry, you're wrong. <laughs> God loves me. God give me his grace. Come on, you ought to be getting excited this morning about the grace and the mercy of God and the joy that he brings when we begin to fellowship with him. When we begin to enjoy that grace, we begin to open that package. And it's like, uh, it's like that gift that keeps on giving. Was that jelly? Was it jelly? The gift that keeps on giving? They sent you a different jar every month or something like that. <laughs> it was called the gift that kept on giving. Well, grace is the gift that keeps on giving. It works in our life every day. Every day grace works in our life. Paul said this, he had repeatedly identified grace as the basis of his calling as an apostle. This is what, and each one of us can relate to this, really. Think about this, Romans 15, 15. Bro brothers, I wrote to you boldly as reminding you in part because of the grace that is given unto me by God. Paul realized he had no ability outside of God's grace. If I don't have grace, God of grace, God's grace, I'm nothing. I got to have it. In my life. And Ephesians 2 7, he says the same thing. And Jesus Christ is the embodiment of grace coupled with truth. John 1 14 says this. And the word became what? Flesh. The logos became flesh. It got flesh and bone. And and the tabernacle among us, he walked among them for, for 33 and a half years. The, the grace of God was upon this earth, literally on this earth. He walked among them. And, and he says this, or goes on and says, And we beheld his what? His glory. The glory is of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and of what? Of truth. Brother and sister, God is trying to bring us to the point where we begin to unwrap these gifts of grace and we begin to realize the potential they perform in our lives and we begin to live a more holy, righteous life before him because of his grace for us. God's not satisfied with mediocre. He said that over in, in Revelations. He said, I wish that you were cold or hot, but you're lukewarm. Mediocre, complacent, indifferent. Anybody been there? All of us have been there, but God's grace brings us out of that. Amen? Okay. So grace is a gift, Ephesians 4, 7. But to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. According to what? The measure of Christ in your life is how you receive grace. Come on. The more you have of God, the more grace you have. The more you have of Jesus in your life, the more you have love and joy and peace. Because see, remember what we started off, uh, grace and peace be multiplied. People today are looking for peace in their minds. And it comes to the knowledge of him and him alone. Self-help books won't help you. They may help you a little bit, but they won't keep you there. And so we need God in our lives. This is an important analogy because it teaches us some key things about grace. First, this. I, I got time. First, this. Anyone who has ever received a gift understands that a gift is much different from a loan, right? A loan, they expect back. A gift, they don't expect back, right? which requires a payment or return. The fact that grace is a gift means that nothing is owed in return. You know, oh God, God give you grace, unmerited favor. You, the Bible goes on and says you've been bought with a price. You're not your own anymore. 
You belong to him. You give it all back to him. Everything we have is God's. Everything. The clothes, the cars, the houses, the everything. It all belongs to God. Because why? You've been bought. A price was paid for your salvation. And God asks us to give our lives back to him so that he can use us. And we gain grace and mercy and joy and peace through all that when we begin to give ourselves back to God. Second is this. There is no cost to the person who receives a gift. I don't, I don't have to do anything to get the gift. Right? How many had to do something to get God's grace? Not a one of you. There was no cost to you. The cost was all God. He paid a price for your, your salvation and your grace. He hung on, he's hung his son on a cross. So a gift is free to us, although it is not free to the giver. The giver paid some price for that gift. Amen? Jesus paid a price so that you could receive grace. I, I think that's wonderful. That I didn't have to do anything, sister, to receive God's grace. He gave it to me. It cost him, but it didn't cost me anything but to accept him as my Savior. And so I received it freely. And as he gives that gift, I said it earlier, you just don't put it down and so, say, oh, good, I'm, I got saved. It's more than that. It's a life. Come on. When, when, I, when I, I got saved, God changed me. I used to, to party and do all those things, but when God came in my life, nobody had to tell me. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. I laid it down. Didn't even, I don't regret ever laying it down in my life. And so when he calls us and he gives us his grace, it's a, it's a gift from him. We don't have to do anything to receive it. God just extends it. And the train, thing is this, people, uh, God is a just God, and God gives every person an opportunity to receive his grace. Some people say, oh, no, yes, he has. He's come to people's lives one way or another. He has spoke to their hearts. There was a time when the Holy Spirit spoke specifically to them, and they would not listen to him. And they therefore rejected the grace of God and the mercy of God, and therefore they took themselves out of his presence and out of his protection, and they're, they're, they're risking their lives in this world. Being young doesn't guarantee you tomorrow. The Bible says my life is but a vapor that soon passes away. Sixty-seven years is nothing to God. It's but a vapor. And so we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Tomorrow may never, we may never see tomorrow. But if we accept God's grace, we're always going to see our tomorrows. If it ain't here, it's going to be there. But it's not here, I'm going to be there seeing God's grace. Amen? And, and so we're always going to see our tomorrows with God. Third one, third thing. Once a gift has been given, ownership of the gift has been what? Transferred. It's now ours to keep. God gives us our grace and we get to keep it. We don't have to, don't have to pay him for it. We don't have to grovel before him to get it. We just got to give it, just receive what he gives to us and just hold on to it and say, God, I'm holding on to your grace. I know what's going to get me through. That's what Paul was doing. He said, I'm just going to hold on to the grace of God. He said, my grace, he said his grace was sufficient, so I'm just going to hold on to that grace. He's going to get me through it. He's going to get me through it, brother and sister. God's going to get you, each and every one of you through it if you begin to hold upon his grace. See, we, we're, I don't think we're comprehending the full extent of what grace is, but I hope that by the time I get through with this, you'll understand grace in a more significant way. The fourth thing is this. In the giving of the gift, the giver voluntarily forfeits something he owns. Willingly losing what belongs to him so that the recipient will profit from it. Do you hear that? Let me read it again. In the giving of a gift, the giver voluntarily forfeits. God voluntarily forfeited. Something he owns. 
willingly losing what belongs to him so that the recipient will profit from it. The giver becomes poorer so the recipient can become richer. What did he say? I became poor that you might be rich. Amen? I died on the cross so you have grace. I died on the cross because I love you. I died on the cross for I want you to have peace in your life. I died on the cross so you'll have joy. You know, Jesus said, I look to the cross with joy, despising the shame of it, but look to it with joy because he's seen the victory that was in that cross. This is generous and voluntary exchange from the giver to the recipient. It's visible. 2 Corinthians 8 9, and I'm getting ready to close. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that through, though he was rich, yet for your sakes, I just quoted, he became poor so that, yet, that you through his poverty might become rich. How did he do it? By his grace. Finally, the Bible teaches that grace is completely unmerited. The, the gift and the act of giving have nothing at all to do with our merit or our quality or our quantity. See, uh, numbers mean nothing to God. Hearts mean something to God. God doesn't look about how big the church is or, or, or he doesn't just give grace. He doesn't give more grace to people the bigger church than he gives the little church. God gives us all equally and he gives us his grace and his mercy. You don't have to go to a big church to experience it. You can experience it in your home, in your car, in your job. You can experience the grace of God. You know, every time when you almost had a wreck and all you could do is say, Jesus! That was God's grace at work that kept you from that accident. Or you know how many times you, you've been delayed and you, and you got all huffed up and puffed about it, but when you got down the road, there was a massive wreck, and that delay kept you from that wreck? That's God's grace. That's God's grace working in your life. God sees ahead of you and keeps you from falling into the snares and the traps of the enemy. When, 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 he, uh, when you want to, to do the wrong thing, God begins to move things, to change things so that you cannot fall into that path because he loves you so much. He was willing to give you that chance to serve him. Hallelujah. Romans 4, 4. But to him working, the reward is not reckoned according to grace, but account according to debt. Romans 11, 5 through 6. Even so then, also in the present time, a remnant according to the election of grace has come into being. But if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it's works, then there's no more of grace. And otherwise, work is no more of grace. And so we don't have to do anything. 2 Timothy 1, 9, and 10. Therefore, you should not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, not of, nor of me, his prisoner. Paul said he was a prisoner of the Lord. But be partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us. Has he saved you? And called us with a holy calling. Listen to what he says. He saved you. He's called you with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the eternal times. God called you before you were born. The Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and all our members are written in the book. Our DNA is recorded in the book. Some people, how are they going to get people back that have been cremated? God got their DNA. He just got to speak it. They're born back. The dust we go anyway. And, and so, so anyway, so here we are. God has given us all these things. Grace does not stop once we are saved. God is gracious to us for the rest of our lives, working within us and upon us. The Bible encourages us with many additional benefits that grace secures for every believer. Grace does what? It justifies us before a holy God. We can't justify us. I'm going to close. I named through with grace. I haven't got the peace yet. So you can see this is going to be a long time. (laughs) 
But I want us to understand what God is doing for us. Grace and peace has been multiplied. I couldn't live without God's grace. I need God's grace every day. I need the strength of that grace to get me through the day because sometimes the enemy assails me and tries to destroy me, but I have the grace of God in my life. Like Paul said, that I sought him, but God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And so, brother and sister, God's grace is sufficient for each and every one of you. Don't think the enemy is stronger than God because he is not. That's just a lie. Just a lie. What's everybody saying? Glory. Some of you are going through battles, but I've got to tell you, God's grace is sufficient to get you through that. Come on. God's grace is sufficient to get you through every battle, through every storm. I don't care what it is. That God is greater than that. And so we have the grace of God working in our life that he gives us the sufficiency we need to get through every situation in our life. Sickness, disease, financial relationships, addictions, health problems, God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient to get you through it. And I want us to understand grace even more than this. There is more about God's grace, and we need to understand what, how what has God done for us in that wonderful gift that he has given us? And as we unwrap that gift, we see more and more. You see, uh, I, I used to be bad about my kids' as Christmas presents. I would put them in about three or four boxes and tape them just as much as I could. <laughs> I put bricks in them and everything else. <laughs> it took them a while to unwrap that gift. <laughs> But as they unwrapped it, their excitement grew. <laughs> Amen? Or they got mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, as we open the gift of God's grace, we'll find it more and more. We'll, as we gain it through knowledge, we gain it through his word. So if you're not reading the word of God, you don't understand the grace of God. You don't understand how God operates in your life. You don't understand the power of God because if we don't partake of his word daily... If we, if we don't eat of his word, if we don't eat from that heavenly manna every day and begin to experience that word in our life and begin to, it's not just enough to read the word, but you've got to apply the word. I think in Bible study, I'm getting very close, but in Bible study, this is the thing, that what you teach or, or what you preach or whatever, if people don't think upon it, then it's like seed is blown away in the wind. Amen? The Bible says as soon as you walk out the door, there's a devil there waiting to take, snatch the seed from you because he don't want it to take root in your life. See, it used to be when we came to church, we never came without a Bible, and we took notes because we wanted to, to, to meditate upon what we heard. We wanted to, to know it better in our lives. We wanted to experience it better in our life, and so uh, I, I have hundreds of notes. My Bible looks like... Uh, Two Bibles written on the same pages. <laughs> and Because and took, I took notes, amen? And, and the thing is this, uh, uh, the enemy is going to try to keep you from thinking about things. He'll try to get your mind occupied with what's going on in your life and not upon God and his word. But if you partake of that word every day, you begin to experience God's grace every day, and he begins to bring peace to your mind, and he begins to bring deliverance as we partake of his word. It's food for us. It's food for us. Amen? All right. Anybody need prayer? If you're going through a struggle, you need whatever, God is here. God can do it. You know he can. God's done it over and over in this church. Many people have gained victory through this. And so we believe in the power of prayer, and we believe in the power of God's word. Anybody? They're all good, okay? Father, we're grateful today for your presence, Father. We ask that you would let this seed take root in our lives, Father. God, let it not just be a snack, but let it be a meal, Father. Uh, that we chew on and we gain the nourishment from it, God, and it strengthens us, Father. God, let us understand your grace and your mercy in our life, your peace, Father, that you give us, Father. Let us, not, let us be diligent in our search of you, God. 
And Father, we thank you for each and every one here today. We pray your blessings upon their life. Bless them coming in and going out. Let them be the head and not the tail. God, let them have favor in every situation. Let your blessings be upon them. Whenever, whenever endeavor, God, bless them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.